All right, we're doing reverse integer in JavaScript. This just says, you know, reverse an integer, but if it's negative, you have to also make your reverse negative uh, and whatnot. And also has this 32 bit signed integer uh, constraint here. So, all that math. All right. So the way I approach this is first, uh, very similar to how I reverse a string. Essentially, I want to take uh, the number, loop all the way through it, and then just append um, uh, each number inside of the split up number uh, to itself. And then from there, uh, just check to see if it's negative or not. So how I do that first is take my input and make it a string, string, okay? And then from here, I would go like this, make a result, make that an empty string, and then we would do, oh, that's a for loop. That's right, because you can't do uh, a for loop like that. Um, with a number. So all this does, right, when you're looping through this stringified number is you're just taking result, which starts at zero, adding on whatever uh, whatever i is. So if it's, if what you're doing is, is going through one, two, three, you're taking nothing plus what i is. Well, i here would be one. And then the next time around, it would be one. Oh, actually, this is backwards. It would be one plus because i is one. So next time around, uh, it would be it would be two plus one, and that would equal right. And then lastly, it would be 3 plus 21. Right, so that's how this builds up a string. So from here, we have to change this result uh, back into a number because we're not returning a string. And if we run this, it's not going to work. Um, two things, because one, we don't have this uh, this limit check that we're not jumping through that hoop, and also because we're not changing it to a negative. So there's a couple of ways uh, that are that you could do to make this into a negative a number. If this is an input negative, right? It's supposed to also be an input, an output negative. So a couple of ways to do that. One, you can just see, you know, if the number uh, is less than zero. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll just call it negative test. And I'm taking my let's put this up here. Checking to see if x is less than zero, then we're going to set it to negative one. Otherwise, we're just going to set it to one. So then, down here, we would simply return hmm. one thing we should also do is I'm gonna grab this, you don't have to watch me type it, but we're gonna make a limit here. I looked this up right here, this number. Uh, I haven't been asked a question like this in JavaScript where we have these limits, these 32-bit signed integers. I think that's more of a Java thing, which is a language I know uh, very little about. But anyways.
making sure that uh, if result is greater than limit, then we're just going to return zero. Otherwise, we're going to return result times the negative test. So if negative test up here is set to negative one, then it would be result times negative uh, one, and that would uh, flip our number from a positive into a negative and return it. Otherwise, it would just be result times one right here. So that's what this magic is doing up here. And that's what it's doing down here. Uh, so that's how you do that one.